Hi, my name is Linda, and I work at the Philadelphia Zoo. When we first came together, we decided that this festival would be all about collaboration. So a group of us got together, we sat around a big table, and we all decided who's going to work with who. And right there was the Monell Chemical Census Center. They were there saying, we want to work with the zoo. We want to work with the zoo. We're like, we do. <laughs> and so with Taste and Smell, we actually have the opportunity from a scientific, a more scientific and objective uh, way to try to understand what animals really experience. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through five demonstrations that are going to illustrate some basic concepts about how we see the world from taste and smell and how our animals see the world through taste and smell. So I'm going to do this demonstration with you because I always like to show you that it's safe and I'm not trying to poison you. <laughs> with an open mind and an open heart, let's all just indulge in bio one. <laughs> salty and bitter, but there's a new kid on the block, and that kid on the block is what you just tasted. It's called umami, which is Japanese for delicious taste. There's no American or English word that corresponds exactly. So now I'd like to enter a little bit the sensory world of the big cats and the carnivores. And to enter their sensory world, what I'd like you to do is to taste vial. <laughs> What, what you just had is something called sodium pyrophosphate. Well, most humans don't like it. However, it's just like sprinkling uh, salt or sugar on the food of a cat. We should also realize that what we like is not necessarily what our animals like, and what our animals like is not necessarily what we like. But one of the things we learned in our laboratory is, is that actually carnivores, domestic cats, lions, and tigers, and other carnivores, actually completely lack the sweet receptor. So they're unable to perceive sweet taste. So what I'm going to do for the next demonstration is I'm going to give you a sense of what that experience is like. If you thought it was pretty sweet, it's because it is pretty sweet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take vial 5. And you'll notice that I was a little bit more generous here than I was. And this is a compound that blocks our ability to perceive sweet. A lion is given a choice on how to consume its prey. It does start from the hind of the animal and work its way forward. A lot of times these animals eat in prize, and they will eat whatever they can get a hold of, and that's just the best. Hi everyone, um, I'm Hannah. I'm visiting Philadelphia from uh, the UK. I've come to uh, learn how to look at the genetics of lots of different types of birds and how it relates to what they do or don't like to eat. What do birds eat? Well, somebody back there, what do your chickens eat? Uh, right? Do they, uh, do they have any favourite snacks? Fruit. Yeah? Uh, how about your budgies and your canaries and your parrots? Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Birds actually have a really diverse diet. Some of them eat big juicy caterpillars, or the seeds that you put in the feeders in your garden, or some of them eat berries and they just eat fruit all the time. On the other hand, you've got your raptors that eat small mammals. Um, and they do eat pizza. <laughs> Kingfishers and other, other raptors that eat fish. And then, I'm sure plenty of you have seen pigeons and the sparrows in the railway stations eating junk food. He likes vanilla ice cream, it's melted. He likes the grapes, you know, he knows when I get up the sweet roll, he wants the icing. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's you normally what I eat, burn. so that's what's in the house. Is sugar. <laughs> um, but do they, do they really taste sugar? Is it's it... a good question, and the answer is we don't and know. And I'm willing to donate my bird's tongue to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the whole bird. 